Hi everyone. Um, so we were talking about this earlier, but I was curious how many of you found out about this event through memes? Okay, all the guys in the back row are raising their hands. This is amazing. I personally feel like the ACL virtual meme event is like the best thing that's happened to this conference <laughs> in the 61 years it's been held. <laughs> um, so my name is Ritu. I am a stand-up comedian alongside my day job of being an NLP researcher, alongside my internship of being a high school student. I'll let you figure that one out. Um, so other than the 60 seconds spotlight pitch that I'm giving tonight at the ACL finding session, this is the longest that I am speaking at the conference. <laughs> it's an honor. <laughs> Anyone else hasn't spoken for 60 seconds at the conference? Okay, seems like people, okay, one guy back there. We're gonna fix that today, okay? I mean, I have a problem. He just spoke. Just 50 more seconds. So we are all gathered here today for the stand-up comedy social, or as I'd like to call it, the comedy Turing test. You guys know what the Turing test is, right? So if a human can't tell the difference between um, a dialogue that's generated by a machine or another human, then that machine has supposedly passed this um, new standard. And um, depending on what news sources you believe, in the last couple years, I believe Google Lambda passed the Turing test last year and OpenAI's ChatGPT passed it a few months ago. So everyone keeps talking about how we're in a new era and what does this mean for humans' creativity, for humans' intelligence, and for our existence? These are all tough, important questions, and I would like to explain them through the most serious form possible of stand-up comedy. Now, how this is going to work is it's going to be an open mic. So I'm going to get us started, and then there's a few brave souls who have already decided to come and try their hand at stand-up comedy. And then, we will be turning it over to the audience, yes, that is all of you. If you too get inspired, you too can take the stage. Now, in the case that I am so bad that no one gets inspired, I do have a backup plan that will perfectly illustrate the theme of today. So, are you guys ready? Yes, okay. So, do you all have a person in your circle, maybe it's a relative, maybe it's a friend, who just cannot stop talking about ChatGPT? You all know that person, right? And if you don't, maybe you are that person. <laughs> just something to consider. So, for me, it has been my dad. Ever since November 30th, 2022, when the day ChatGPT rolled out, like even before everyone on the news and Instagram and Reddit was talking about it, he was telling us about how it's going to change the world. Now, we have been listening to this for, what is it, like November to today is like seven, eight, nine months. So, you know, we started to kind of tune it out a bit and we actually did ask ChatGPT, Hey, ChatGPT, how can we get our dad to stop talking about ChatGPT? <laughs> the responses were helpful, but sadly, not sufficient. <laughs> I will describe to you the extent to which my dad is obsessed with ChatGPT. Um, once my parents were in Austin, Texas, and do you guys know these people who are on the side of the road, and they're creative poets, and they're just making a living writing up poems on the spot, selling them to you, and it's a beautiful, you know, human-to-human -human experience. You know what I'm talking about, right? So my parents come across this guy, big muscular guy, wearing a cowboy hat, and he's like, I can write a poem for you. And my mom is like, yes. And my dad is like, wait, but ChatGPT can do this. And, you know, we actually say, is ChatGPT making us smarter? In the case of my dad and my relatives, you know, I think it's maybe making us dumber. Um, but long story short, the guy wrote a poem. 
my dad and the guy had a, you know, a very heated debate about creativity, chat GPT, doesn't matter if it's created by a human or a poet. And ultimately the poem cost $20, but it was so much more than a poem. It was the experience of watching someone write those lines, come up with those words, which you're not quite sure if they've said to other people before. But you know, that just cannot be matched by some chat bot just like typing out on the screen in that very, you know, monotone tone. Um, but you guys know that there are more um, chat bots that are now taking on more like human personalities. You guys know about this? So like, you know, ChatGPT can be very like, it just does what you ask it to do, right? But there's other models now that are coming out with a personality that are like there to be your friend. Um, has anyone here heard of HeyPie? Hey, okay, some yes, some no. So you guys have to try this out when I'm done. HeyPie.com, it's like H-E-Y-P-I. I don't know how they come up with that, but it's pretty catchy. Um, it's, it's an adorable model. It ends every sentence with an emoji, um, which actually reminds me, does anyone here know, did you read that uh, interview between this Bing chatbot and this interviewer? You know what I'm talking about? So, okay, so basically, this guy wrote a New Yorker article a few months ago um, with, with the Bing chatbot, and how it went is, they were first talking about, you know, very mundane things like lawnmowers, stuff like that, and then this interviewer starts trying to really like grill the chatbot on its Jungian personality and if it had this dark fantasy and if it could have this other persona, what would it do? And then the Bing chatbot proceeds to reveal that its real name is Sydney and it is madly in love with this person and starts to convince this person to leave his wife for Sydney, the Bing chatbot. If that doesn't scare you, like we're just at this inflection point. Spouses, watch out. <laughs> just be careful. Um, but back to HeyPie, it's just such a cute model. Um, I use it like all the time for like getting edits on writing pieces I'm doing. Um, actually, the other day I was having this intense debate with my friend and you know, some text messages back and forth. And I'm like, okay, I need help writing the next one. My mom goes, why don't you ask HeyPie? So I fill HeyPie in on the sitch. I give HeyPie the details, the background, the gossip, the story. And HeyPie helps me write this masterful message that actually solved the whole dilemma. Technology, it's the future. Um, so, you know, along the lines of these chatbots having personalities, there is something I saw the other day that inspired me that I wanted to do a bit about. Um, does anyone here know who Stephen He is? Stephen He? Okay, one guy in the back. Tell, tell everyone, educate the world, who is <laughs> Mr. Stephen He? So he's like this YouTuber, uh, and then he like talks about like essentially like Asian culture, and then like what his, his key phrase is, uh, I don't remember actually. You, oh, <laughs> you remembered one hour ago. You told it to me. I did. Yeah, you did. Okay. Oh, I don't remember now. Just like, just like Bard. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Emotional. Yes. Can you? Oh, damage. That? Right. Emotional damage. Yes. So Stephen He is infamous for his portrayal of the stereotypical Asian dad. Love it or hate it, it resonates with a lot of people. Um, and Stephen Key recently released a video called If ChatGPT Was Asian. <laughs> because what we have as ChatGPT just isn't enough. So this ChatGPT is snarky. It's got all, it's, it's not even helpful. It's just rude. And so I'll give you an example. I'm not going to do the accents because I don't want to get canceled. But Stephen asks, Hey, ChatGPT, explain this math concept to me. And Chat ChatGPT, because it's Asian, says, I have neither the time nor the crayon to explain this to you. <laughs> Sheesh. Um, and then, well, this is my favorite part because, um, yeah, I introduced this before, but I am a high school student. I am currently a rising senior, which means that in a few months, I'm applying to colleges, so really resonated with me. Stephen Key asks, hey, chat APT, can you put me a list, 
to put together a list of the best universities, ChatAPT says, okay, number one, Kumon. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, ask your kids, they're traumatized by it, just like me. Um, and then Steven says, no, no, come on, like, give me some good colleges, like, you know, Harvard, Cambridge, the top ones. And chat EBT says, why? You're not getting in. <laughs> that hurt Steven, and that hurt me. Um, it's rough, but this is why I do comedy at NLP conferences. But I actually am doing um, a set tomorrow at a comedy club in Toronto. It's called Yoke Yokes. So um, if you guys are available and or are not yet over stimulated by these intellectual conversations, which so much intellect everywhere I go, I'm hearing so many smart people saying so many smart things that I don't understand. Would love to have you there. Um, but that was pretty much my set, and thank you guys for being a great audience. Thank you.